Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element 16, causes of flooding. Open an atlas, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Rivers can flood due to a vast number of reasons. It can be due to the climate, the type and the amount of vegetation, or even if an area has a lot of tarmac or human inhabitation, or the type of rock beneath the ground. So let's have a look at these in groups. Our first group has been labelled as precipitation. Last lesson we learned that precipitation meant that any type of water coming in to the drainage basin in any format. It could be in snow, hail, or just plain old rain. Now, it rains a lot in the UK and it doesn't flood very often. In order to flood, we need to have some sustained heavy rainfall to occur. So high volumes of rainfall will cause a river's discharge to increase rapidly and increases the chance of the river breaking its banks. It does this because heavy rainfall means that it's gonna to lead to more surface runoff. The ground can't cope with the amount of rainfall coming in and it has to fall across the ground, which is a quicker way to get to the river, which means that ultimately there's more water there to burst the banks. Prolonged rainfall also means that if it's raining for a long period of time, over several days, the ground might have absorbed as much water as it potentially can, which means that it won't be able to store any more. So this is called becoming saturated. The ground becomes saturated and again leads to more surface runoff, leading to more water reaching the river quicker. The other thing in terms of precipitation is snow. During the winter, we're more prone to getting snow and when it starts to melt, that turns to water which creates large amounts of surface runoff very, very quickly when the snow melts. But another factor to consider is the fact that the ground, although the snow is melting, the ground will heat up slower. So the ground might still be frozen. And if it, the ground's full of frozen, it won't be able to accept any water in terms of inf infiltration. And again, this leads to more surface runoff and therefore more likely to flood. The second grouping is geology and relief. Our geology can be split up into two different areas. We can consider rocks to be impermeable or permeable. Impermeable rocks are tightly knit sets of rocks that don't have very many air, ga air gaps, which means that water can't get into them very easily. So percolation can't occur, which is when water gets through the rocks and, and then also means that we can't store water as ground stores which means that it's going to back up and end up as surface water again. Permeable rock are open rocks, so they've got air pockets in there. Water can drain freely through and percolate through and can be stored in the ground water. This is also hampered by the relief, so we can also call relief the shape of the land. If a, a slope is quite steep, then water is going to travel very quickly down the side of that slope to the bottom of the valley. It's harder for water to be infiltrated because if it's on a steep slope, because it doesn't have time to actually soak into the ground, it's just running off the surface really quickly. And we also find most of our rivers, if not all of them, at the base of a valley, which means that that water is getting there even quicker. Vegetation also plays an important role. We've learned last lesson that vegetation intercepts water. So it slows down the rate at which water reaches the main river channel. Some areas will be naturally rich in vegetation. So that could be trees, plants, grasses, and they all intercept. Humans can have an influence on this by chopping it down, but there are also areas that are naturally lacking in vegetation. These tend to be higher altitude locations, such as high hills and mountains. And the only things they have will probably be very, very fine shrub, um, very, very fine grasses, but they won't have trees and large groups of vegetation because the soil and the climate conditions don't allow those sort of things to grow. So those mountainous areas are going to be more prone to surface runoff more than those areas that have lots of deep, lush vegetation. And then finally, we can consider mankind. Urbanization is a huge problem in terms of river flooding. If you think about a city, most of the things that we build with are impermeable. Tarmac for roads, concrete for buildings and pavements. These are all things that don't allow water to be absorbed in. We've adapted to this 
by then building drains. So at the minute, we've got lots of surface runoff from these areas that are not going to absorb the water. Where's that water going to go? Well, we've designed those drains to funnel all that water into a river really, really quickly. Well, that's only going to lead to more problems because it means that the water is getting so quick into the river that it's more likely to flood. Well, that brings our lesson to an end. We'll continue at your own pace by completing the Now Try It tasks for homework. Class dismissed.